This is part nine in our series of lectures on infinite sets. In this lecture, I'm going to introduce you to the Cantor Schroeder Bernstein theorem. I'm going to state it for you and I'm going to give you a few examples. In the previous lecture, we saw that the open interval from zero to one has exactly the same cardinality as the entire set of real numbers. And it was very easy to see that because we could draw the graph of a certain tangent function um, that was clearly a bijection from 0, 1 to r. We can draw the graph of a similar tangent function just by translating it and dilating it a little bit differently to show that 0, 2 has the same cardinality as r. But if you take a set uh, which lies somewhere in between those two sets, namely the left open and right closed interval 0, 1, um, intuitively, it seems clear that it also must have the same cardinality as r. But it turns out it's not so easy to uh, write down an explicit bijection that would map um, this set into r. It certainly, I can prove to you that the, it's impossible to find a continuous bijection from 0, 1 to r. And that follows from something called the Intermediate Value Theorem, which says that the continuous image of a connected set is connected. Now if you could map this bijectively to R, then the 1 would have to go somewhere. It would have to go to some point f of 1 in R, and that would split R up into two pieces, the part to the left of f of 1 and the part to the right of f of 1, and that's a disconnected set. However, the remainder of this, the open interval from 0 to 1, would have to map to a connected set and uh, that's a contradiction. So you can't come up with a continuous bijection, and so I think you'll have trouble writing explicitly a bijection from this set to R. So the question is, how do you prove uh, that these two sets have the same cardinality? The answer is that there's a wonderful theorem, it's called the Cantor-Schroeder-Bernstein theorem, which is very easy to apply and which easily allows us to um, to deduce that those two sets have the same cardinality. So here's the statement of the theorem. It says that if you give yourself two sets A and B, and if it's possible for you to find an injection from A to B, and an injection from B to A, then there actually exists a bijection from A to B, and so therefore A and B have the same cardinality. Now the idea here is that it's for the examples we're going to do, it's really easy to come up with injections that map one set to the other. Um, so it's telling you that if you can do that in both directions, then you automatically know that there exists a bijection. It doesn't tell you how to find the bijection, but it tells you that it guarantees that it exists. So I'll show you a nice proof of this a few lectures from now, but for now, um, let's just simply look at some applications of it. So let's use the theorem to prove that the, this, uh, the left open right closed interval 0, 1 has the same cardinality as the open interval from 0 to 100. So all we have to do is get an injection from this set to this set and an injection from this set to this set. So one direction is obvious. You just map x to x. That certainly maps this injectively to this. And the other way is only a little bit harder. What you do is you just shrink down all of the elements here by just taking x divided by 100. If you divide each of these x's by 100, that will map this into the open interval from 0 to 1. That is also an injection. And therefore, by the theorem, these two sets must have the same cardinality. Here's another one. This one is only a little bit harder than that one. Um, why should these two sets have the same cardinality? So, I think it's a little bit less obvious how to get your injections, but why don't you give it a try? See that you can find injections from this set to this set, and from this set to this set, and when you come back you can check my answer out. Okay, so my injection going from here to here is what? If you just let x go to x, um, that easily maps into this part of it, 
and therefore that's that's one direction. Now we want to be able to go, the harder way is to go from here into 0, 1. If you divide x, so here you see I've divided, the idea is that I, I map this piece to a, a small piece on the left side of this, and I map this to a piece on the right side of that, just making sure that they don't intersect. So how do you get this into the left side of that? Well, x over 1,000 doesn't quite work because 0 would go to 0, which isn't in here. So I add a little 1 over 1,000 to it just to guarantee that 0 will map to something bigger than 0. So it's easy to check that this piece maps to the interval from 1 over 1,000 to the interval from 2 over, um, to the interval 10 over 1,000. So that's sort of a, a small piece on the left side of this. And then I map this piece uh, to x over 40. So that's going to map to 20 over 40, which is 1 half to uh, 3 quarters. And so it's easy to check that those are both injections. And that completes the proof.